Hello, I'm Rebecca Barnes and welcome to the Science at Ether vodcast. In this episode, our voyage through the solar system brings us to two of the terrestrial planets, Venus and Mars. We will explore their similarities and differences to Earth and find out about the European missions that are helping to unravel their mysteries. Before spacecraft were launched to explore the solar system, there was much speculation about the nature of Earth's closest planetary neighbours, Venus and Mars. Venus, with its shroud of thick clouds that obscure the surface from optical telescopes, was thought to be covered with water and lush rainforests. Dark patches observed on the surface of Mars were thought to be old seabeds filled with vegetation. Venus, Earth and Mars are grouped closely together in the inner solar system. These three planets have much in common, such as their rocky composition and geological features, and they are the only terrestrial planets that possess atmospheres. By understanding our closest planetary neighbours, we can learn more about the evolution of our home planet. Venus, Earth and Mars were all made from silicate rocks and varying amounts of volatile elements when the solar system was forming. The big question is, what happened to make them evolve into the very different worlds that we see today? Venus is our nearest planetary neighbour and Earth's near twin in mass and radius. Despite these similarities, the more than 30 spacecraft that have explored Venus have yielded surprising discoveries and a most inhospitable planet. As Venus orbits the Sun, it rotates in the opposite direction with respect to the other planets, and extremely slowly, just once in 243 Earth days. This is even longer than a Venusian year. Unlike the slow rotation of the planet, the top of the Venusian atmosphere whips around in just four days. Most of the atmosphere around Venus consists of carbon dioxide. Incredibly, Venus and Earth have about the same amount of carbon dioxide. On Earth, it is locked up in the crust in the form of carbonates. On Venus, it mostly exists as gas. Sulfur dioxide is also present in the atmosphere and through chemical reactions with water vapor forms sulfuric acid droplets. These droplets develop into complex, thick, swirling clouds that form noxious fog and acid rain on the surface of Venus. The dense atmosphere exerts a pressure that is 90 times greater than the atmospheric pressure on Earth. With no protective magnetic field around the planet, the solar wind strips gas from the atmosphere of Venus out into space. This has a huge effect on the climate of the planet. Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system, with a surface temperature of over 700 Kelvin. Despite only a small fraction of the light it receives from the Sun, reaching the surface. The large amount of carbon dioxide and other gases trap enough energy to increase the temperature dramatically, causing an enhanced greenhouse effect. Such a high surface temperature led scientists to quickly dismiss ideas of present-day oceans of liquid water and life on Venus. The age of a planet's surface is generally determined by the number of craters present. In the case of Venus, only the largest rocks would be able to survive the journey through the thick atmosphere. Therefore, Venus has very few craters on its surface, and none that are older than about 500 million years. At some point in the past, over a short geological time period, the entire planet was flooded with lava. Mars formed about four and a half billion years ago, at the same time as the Earth and Venus. The plethora of spacecraft that have visited Mars since the 1960s have discovered a dry, barren and dusty red world. Mars has a thin atmosphere that rotates with the planet. Despite being about 100 times less dense than Earth's, the atmosphere is dense enough to support a weather system. The Martian wind causes some of the most spectacular weather on Mars, from tornado-like dust devils to huge dust storms that can last for months and engulf the entire planet. 
Carbon dioxide dominates the Martian atmosphere, which contains small amounts of other gases, including water vapor. Particles of frozen carbon dioxide can condense high in the atmosphere, creating thin clouds. Water ice also causes clouds to form, along with lower-level haze and fog. Before the space age, the Martian surface was not believed to have many prominent features. Spacecraft images have shown that, on the contrary, Mars has many spectacular geological features. These include a huge canyon known as Valles Marineris that is so long it would stretch from the Atlantic to the Ural mountain range, and the largest volcano in the solar system, Olympus Mons. This huge volcano is nearly three times higher than Mount Everest. Olympus Mons lies on the edge of another large feature on Mars called the Tharsis Dome. It is on the Tharsis Dome that all the largest volcanoes on Mars are found. The dome is a huge bulge on the surface of Mars that rises to a height of about 10 kilometers. The southern and northern hemispheres of Mars are distinctly different. The entire crust of the southern hemisphere is extremely old, with rocks that were formed about 4 billion years ago. This old surface is littered with craters and is where the mountainous rocky highlands are found. The northern hemisphere is much smoother and there are far fewer craters, indicating that the surface is much younger. The surface of Mars is riddled with scars, formed sometime in the past when liquid water flowed on the surface. Channels, valleys and deposits of sedimentary rocks all provide strong evidence for this. The first spacecraft to visit Venus and Mars completely changed humankind's view of Earth's planetary neighbors. Scientists now realize their similarities as well as their differences to Earth. Greater knowledge of Mars and Venus has spurred continued exploration with even more advanced spacecraft. Exploring a hostile world like Venus is challenging. Spacecraft that have landed on the surface have quickly succumbed to the intense heat, extreme atmospheric pressure and burning acid rain. Attempting to probe the atmosphere in visible wavelengths alone is futile, as the clouds cannot be penetrated and show no features or markings. Therefore, other wavelengths of light must be used. In 2005, the European Space Agency launched its first mission to explore Venus and the first to go there for more than 10 years. Venus Express made a five-month journey from Earth to study the planet from orbit. This spacecraft is packed with a suite of instruments to study the Venusian atmosphere and near-space environment at radio, visible and infrared wavelengths, performing spectroscopy and measuring energetic particles. Data from Venus Express allows scientists to study how the workings of the atmosphere, the atmospheric loss to space and the greenhouse effect all act together to produce a climate so different from Earth. Venus Express primarily examines the planet's atmosphere. However, the atmosphere is so dense and therefore closely associated with the surface that studying it will provide clues to the nature of the planet as a whole. The thermal infrared camera on board Venus Express has peered into the thick atmosphere and allowed scientists for the first time to map the wind, speed in three dimensions. To achieve this, the thermal camera tracked clouds at three different levels in the atmosphere, including those just 50 kilometers above the surface, for long periods of time. This provides enough data to allow scientists to start piecing together a picture of the atmospheric phenomena. Data from the onboard spectrometers have shown that the amount of toxic sulfur dioxide varied considerably over just a few days. Sulfur dioxide is not thought to stay for very long, and so it must be being released into the Venusian atmosphere. Otherwise, it would disappear. But how this is occurring, or what mechanism is releasing this gas, is not known. It is likely to be released during volcanic eruptions, but there is as yet no evidence of this process taking place. Water vapor is present in the atmosphere of Venus, 
but in a very low quantity. Venus Express detected the way in which the atmosphere of the planet is being lost to space. This has provided vital clues as to what happened to the water on Venus. High in the atmosphere, water is broken down into its constituent parts, which are then stripped from the atmosphere by the solar wind, meaning that Venus is still losing water. Measuring the amount that the planet is losing from the atmosphere and calculating backwards over time indicates that Venus may once have had the same amount of water as the Earth does today. Venus Express data confirmed that the Venusian atmosphere generates its own lightning. This was an important discovery as electrical discharge breaks molecules into fragments, enabling chemical processes to take place that would not otherwise be possible. Lightning also occurs on Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn. However, on Venus, it is unique, as it is the only type known to be associated with clouds of sulfuric acid. Since its launch, Venus Express has revealed new aspects of the planet and will continue to peer into and through the Venusian atmosphere to piece together answers to as yet unsolved questions. Are volcanic eruptions responsible for topping up the levels of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere? Will Venus Express detect a volcano erupting? Venus seems to have been more Earth-like in the past and to have had large quantities of water. What happened to cause its climate to change so radically and when? What will happen to the Venusian atmosphere in the future? And how will the climate evolve? Mars Express is the European Space Agency's first mission to Mars. Launched in 2003, Mars Express was designed to study the atmosphere and surface of Mars from orbit using a suite of seven instruments. These instruments study Mars in a wide range of wavelengths, including radio to probe beneath the surface, visible and infrared spectrometers to look at minerals and ices on the surface, and ultraviolet and infrared to find out in more detail what elements exist in the atmosphere. Mars Express also has a high-resolution stereo camera in the visible domain that has provided spectacular and detailed images of the surface of the Red Planet. This mission has been, and is still, a great success. In 2004, Mars Express made a surprising detection of methane in the Martian atmosphere. This observation was later confirmed by ground-based telescopes. Further observations from Earth detected plumes of highly concentrated methane. In the atmosphere around Mars, Methane is thought to be able to survive for just a few hundred years. The fact that we observe it now means that it must have been produced recently. The source of the methane is unclear. Could it have been produced by recent life or volcanic activity? Or was it produced a long time in the past? Trapped in the ice and then released as the ice melts with the changing seasons? With the help of data from Mars Express, Scientists have now found evidence that water existed on the surface of Mars for a sustained period of time and have started to unravel its history. The evidence came from the detection of three minerals that provide a record of water-related processes on Mars. Clay-like minerals, sulfates, and iron oxides. Clay-like minerals formed during exposure to large bodies of water. Once these seas and rivers were lost, water at times would burst out from beneath the surface of Mars and evaporate immediately, creating sulfates in the process. Over time, the remaining underground water became frozen and gradually iron oxides were formed on the surface without liquid water. Like Earth, Mars has polar ice caps which for some time have been known to consist of a mixture of water ice and carbon dioxide ice. A radar onboard Mars Express is actively probing the southern pole and has detected frozen water beneath the surface. This is the first time such an experiment has been carried out on any planet. Mars Express data are building maps of this subsurface ice. It is possible that water may exist below the surface in liquid form but it could be too deep for the radar onboard Mars Express to detect. 
Detailed Mars Express images have shown features on the Martian surface that if seen on Earth would have been formed by glaciers. The odd thing about these features on Mars, such as those seen at the base of Olympus Mons, is that they are observed at tropical latitudes, regions that in the past would have been too warm for glaciers to exist. It is thought that this could be the result of changes to the tilt of Mars' axis due to its temporal evolution. The tilt of the axis allowed Olympus Mons to be located at latitudes where glaciers did form. Mars Express has provided fundamental discoveries which have greatly improved our understanding of Mars. However, new questions have also been raised as a result of the new data. To answer these questions, further exploration is required by Mars Express, as well as future generations of explorers. Very little is known about the internal structure of Mars, whether it has a solid or liquid core, if there is a convection zone as on Earth, and how thick the crust is. New data suggests that Mars has gone through some extreme changes in climate. Why this happened is not understood, and by studying this might help us to further understand the long-term changes in the Earth's climate. No evidence for life on Mars has yet been uncovered. If life did evolve on Mars, it may be that there are just a few places where it has survived. These could be underground. If life did not start on Mars, it would suggest that life is not very easy to start, therefore making life on Earth more remarkable and reducing the chances of finding life elsewhere in the universe. Understanding the extreme environment of Venus could play a key role in understanding the Earth. Venus Express will continue to study this planet and scientists are looking at the possibility of changing the spacecraft's orbit for a better view. The addition of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA's, mission to Venus will provide a complementary view. And for the first time, two spacecraft will orbit this mysterious planet. Looking further into the future, Mars will continue to be explored in even greater detail with two new missions in the ExoMars program. One mission consists of an orbiter and an entry, descent and landing demonstrator, and the other will be comprised of the first European rover to land on the Red Planet. Ultimately, scientists want to bring a sample of Mars back to Earth to study in detail in laboratories. The exploration of Earth's siblings, Venus and Mars, continues to result in important discoveries. Venus Express and Mars Express are providing the crucial evidence that will aid understanding of the dramatic and subtle events that set these seemingly similar planets on very different paths of evolution. I'm Rebecca Barnes. Thank you for watching the Science at ESA vodcast.